Okay. Hi. I got a bunch of subscribers. Well, a bunch for me. Not for like a big YouTuber. Um, but the, considering that I only upload typically like once a year for uh, like the holiday season and the present haul, whatever. Um, I did get a, a, a jump of subscribers and I'm gonna guess it's because I said I would update about my children in their autism evaluations. So, I don't know if you can hear, probably go come out in the background. And I'm going to try to, unlike my camera, like my phone, which is like low on storage, um, which is slightly better video quality, which I'll try to use in the future. Because I'm getting like a weird glare. Let's see, and I'm trying to figure out where it's coming from. Let's try that. Um, so, I'm on my iPad. And it's over there, so I'm, I'm wanting to look here, which is straight ahead, and I think the actual camera's there. But anyways, um, my name is Tiffany. Let's start over. <laughs> my name is Tiffany. I am a mother of three. Technically, my oldest is my stepdaughter, who I've been in her life forever. Um, she is almost 10. In like a month, she's 10. So she's nine right now. I have my daughter Eva, who's three and a half right now, and then I have Finley, who just turned two. And today we had Finley's autism valuation. And the other girls went through their evaluations, and if interested, or when I have time, I can make a video on their evaluations and what happened during those, and how maybe testing's different based on age or possibly gender. Um, but Finley went today, same place that we went to for the other girls. They all had different providers, so there technically was a different um, psychologist working with each one. And then they had a supervisor, I think, helping. I don't know if they were helping take, take data or just, like, make sure, like, quality-wise. I don't know. Like, I think because they're younger psychiatrists. I don't know, psychologists. Um who are more seasoned in the field uh, would observe them as, as they were doing the testing. So for Finley, whoa, uh, Finley, we suspected that he had autism. I, what do I want to suspect? I suspected even very early on, like even earlier than I think Yvette, um, just kind of like a slight little background is that my brother, Kenny, who is uh, like a year younger than me, he had autism. <laughs> Has autism. I don't know if he said He's autistic. And so I always knew that there's a higher probability of me having children with autism. And so it's definitely something that me and my husband looked for, like in the kids. And even before Lydia was diagnosed, she got diagnosed at nine years old. Um, we had long suspected and with Finley I saw some of the signs that my mom had described to my brother uh kind of just being like quiet and like taking it all in and the big old eyes and I saw that often with Finley when he was just an infant um not to say that if your infant does that that they they're autistic it's just something that that kind of stuck with me that my mom had said about my brother and I I kind of was thinking it uh, as I was saying that, uh, as Finley grew up, it's funny how I say that as if he's like super old, he's so young, he's still a baby, but he, uh, was slightly delayed in some of the milestones while Yvette was pretty early in a lot of the milestones. He was a little more delayed, like when it came to crawling, uh, walking, he didn't walk until he was a year old. Uh, like just hit a year crawling I think was 10 months while Yvette was walking at 10 months <laughs> he got teeth late uh, and speech wise he's still um, not very clear in his speech and it's limited words that he, he kind of just say so those are some of the things that I know just thinking about um He's so cute. 
So, as he got older, Finley was having, I think, some frustrations due to not be able to communicate effectively. So there was uh, some headbanging, some, some pretty big tantrums there, I would say, over the summer, summer 2021. Uh, which made me um, kind of, even though like in my heart I knew often to get services you need a diagnosis. So uh, I started reaching out to early intervention and I'm like maybe I'm just overthinking it. Like maybe he doesn't really qualify for early intervention. With code and everything, everything takes you know time. I, I reached out to one early intervention. Turns out they didn't service my area redirected me to another one and then we got the ball rolling there uh he didn't have a visit i think he had a visit in october or end of october early november from the early intervention uh group <laughs> who services like our general area and they came they introduced themselves they, they just asked a lot of background information and they came again to do some testing and uh, he qualified across all areas, which I was really shocked by. Some of the things that he would do with me, like play peekaboo, or um, I don't know, like I don't know if it was like something like the block st stacking blocks, or like, hey, can like Finley, can you go get me this and bring it back to me? Like he wouldn't do that with them, but they did see some of that him doing it with me. Um, I worked with kids with autism for more than five years, but five years was my, my last, uh, job, which is a, another video <laughs> about that field. But, uh, I did a lot of testing during that time. So I know it's, it's often that like a kid will do something with their parents and like not do it with like a stranger. So I was aware that would probably ah! happen. Ah. <laughs> oh no, it happened. <laughs> do you know like that? <laughs> You might fit me. You say hi. Say hi. 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 You fit me. Um. Oh no, it's a baby crying. So, where was it? My mind is so scattered after everything today. Um. So they did testing, he, he qualified across all areas, I think OT-wise, he's been regressing in eating with a fork. What are you doing? I see you trying to touch stuff. And uh, getting slightly pickier in some foods. Uh, he's saying, uh, I'm sorry. You pretending to eat? Was it french fries? You have some real french fries over there. We got an easy lunch after. Having a day of testing and dropping the girls off at school. How am I going with it? Uh, <laughs> and then early intervention didn't even start until December because my daughter had a cold and then my husband had a cold. And then you have to get like COVID tests and stuff like that. So he he's had like two, three visits, I think, with EI as of now. <laughs> Uh oh, you play in, and it's funny because even in that period of time, from when I reached out, he was having such bad tantrums to now. The tantrums ceased a bit, like I would say for the most part, almost like ninety percent. Yes. Uh, knock on wood, haven't seen head banging in a while. He whines, but I take that over head bang and a giant tantrum. <laughs> And he been getting mail. Will take a prompt to say like more, please. I taught sign language to Yvette, and she picked it up pretty quick. And she knew I want to say about like ten signs, but like some more approximations. Well, Finley did not want to do like any of that stuff like when he was little like littler than he is now but now he will do like more please but often I have to say like what do you say like what do you want and then he'll say say more or he'll go more or please or peas which is really cute <laughs> he's playing with pretend food right now what are you doing with that potato uh oh that potato is under there it's gonna be hard to get 
It's funny because they were doing that kind of at the assessment. So I guess I'll go into like the actual assessment that they did for him. I believe the only test that they did in person was the ADOS, which is like ADOS. And I think I have the number two after it. So the ADOS and then through like email and stuff, they sent me the MCHAT, which I also completed at the pediatrician. That's something the pediatrician always has us complete at 18 months and at uh, the two year appointment. So I knew that was coming. And I, I felt like the pediatrician was kind of like, oh, no, 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 kind of like things are fine. Kind of like, I'm like, mm. my son likes to line things up and look at items like right at his eyeball. <laughs> and we have a history of autism in the family, so I, I think it's, do you need help? Help. 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 I just wanted it there. There's a giant fire truck. Oh, spooky. And oh, I thought it wasn't recording for a second. Um they had me fill that out. I think it's the Basque, which is B-A-S-C. And it might be a three after it. And then there was another questionnaire that I can't think of what it was. But it's funny because a lot of the questions weren't. Like appropriate for his age, like a lot of them were like, oh, don't like fill out if they're under age one. But I'm like, he still doesn't do like a lot of these things. Like some of them are toileting. And I think they if they go through the questions, so they'll, they'll obviously understand like, oh yeah, like he can't do this kind of thing. Or it's like requesting to play with others or doing things like that he can't do. So that's like the sad thing about testing. It's like, you know, it's like... Uh, you're gonna see your kid or answer things about your kid like it's a bunch of stuff that they do not know how to do they do ask and I feel like it's like maybe like to make up for like oh there's a bunch of like questions of like what your kid cannot do that they're like oh what's your kid's strengths <laughs> and he is very sweet he is pretty good at pretend play but as we learned in the assessment he's not very good at abstract pretend play but I hadn't even thought of, of like, oh, wow. Yeah, he can't do that. Uh, like, say, like, may a box might be a bad example. Because, like, I think he would try to pretend like a box is like a house. Or maybe not he's thinking it's a house, but, like, kind of, like, go into it. Yeah, yeah. Really? Wow, so silly. But if it's, like, she took, like, a block and pretended it was, like, a plane. Like, and he was just, like yeah like nah like what are you doing kind of thing like he, he might pretend it's like food she did a little bit of that and he's able to do that but like I don't think he would take um I don't know a stick and then oh stick might be an example too uh take something and pretend it's like a blanket like she had like towels to be blankets for babies like he I think it was like that's not a blanket like that's a towel yeah yeah <laughs> There was like a script she was kind of going by where you put a baby in a bath and get the baby a bath and take care of the baby. And he, I mean, he liked pretending to turn the water on and do that, but he wasn't really, and then dumping like bubbles or something in the tub, but he wasn't really taking care of the baby of that. There was another one where it was a very tiny baby and he was pretending to feed the baby and he was pretending to feed himself in the cup. Uh, but he does have a tendency to like to to dump things and put them in or put things in, dump them, and vice versa. Nose? Oh, shh. Oh, shh. Everyone, shh. Oh, it's Coco Melon. He knows Coco Melon. So he did that. There was like some sort of plexiglass box. And I thought it was completely encapsulated. So he like picked it up to like try to get the ball underneath. But I guess it had like a, the one side was open. So he kind of had to reach in and get the ball. I don't know the purpose of that, but he did it. Um, yeah, like the putting in, he can put in, uh, what was it? Oh, it was like, almost like, you know, like that shell game, like, which is like a con game, like on the street, like uh, with cards or like putting an item under cups. So it was like a cup game, which he was doing with this too. And then putting a cube under it and it's like, where's the cube? He did good with that. If that was the purpose of it, just to find where it is and actually look for and keep track of it. Uh, the puzzle, I was surprised, It's it was just a blank kind of board, 
and then it was a circle and then a square and a triangle and he was able to put the circle in and he knew that they were supposed to go in the other pieces but he kept switching the square like trying to put the square in the triangle the triangle in the square so he wasn't able to do that which he does have a puzzle that he's able to do that is shapes but it's also like part of a bigger picture so it's like a house one with the Melissa Duck house one and he, overall he's able to kind of do that but it's a little more forgiving and you kind of have the context of like oh like this is a door so it goes in the rectangle kind of thing so he had difficulty in that um they saw when he was having a snack like he was holding up like really close to which is he's doing more often now the i guess she saw the body tightening when he kind of kind of like clenches the jaw and then does kind of like does a little shake kind of thing <laughs> I didn't see him because I was trying to get his coat and stuff ready, but she saw that, um, what was it? He did ask to open, uh, I had to bring something that, that he would want to open and, um, uh, we had like these Pringles I and mean, he, he hasn't had them forever, but he liked them when we used to have them in the summer. So I, I grabbed that and then he, he did ask to open it basically. I think he was trying to say help. Which I was kind of surprised by, and then because we've been working on it so much, and he like will not echo help from me, or or the sign, which the sign is kind of hard, um, to do two hander. What are you doing, baby? And he, uh, he he tapped it, and and I think he might have said open, which they've been working on with EI, and we've been working on that at home to get him to to ask for things as opposed to whining and having to fit over it. What are you doing? I don't want this string in your neck. You silly. <laughs> but yeah, so, that, so that's how that went. We're going to have the official results next week. So, like, I think it's like a full seven days, yeah, seven days from now on a Thursday. I don't know. So, I mean, especially with him, I feel like we know the answer, um, which my husband basically said to, a balloon, uh oh, and with Yvette, I was like, everyone else thought I was crazy, like, she doesn't have autism, and I was like, I think, I really think she does, and you know, I read her the valuation and I was like, oh wow, they're gonna say nothing. Like, you're like, nothing's wrong. Or not to say being autistic is wrong, but like, nothing is unusual or, you know, this is typical development and you're crazy. I don't know. Like, they actually wouldn't say that. But so then when we had like the Zoom, I was like, surprise after and I was like oh okay <laughs> like just because I went in thinking that went to the testing and with the younger kids they have you sit in in the room with for the testing and I don't know what point that they stopped that I don't know and then <laughs> you do a little happy dance and then they like it seemed like she did like a lot of the stuff that they asked her to do and when I made, like, oh, yeah, like, she wasn't really, like, doing eye contact. Like, she would, like, ask for help for, for the lady. And she just kind of, like, slide over. And then she's like, oh, no, I think her eye contact is pretty good. So when she said all that stuff, I just assumed that they were going to say, oh, yeah, she's she's not autistic. But she is. <laughs> so that I was only surprised by that result because I went in thinking she's autistic, had the testing. Oh, she did, like, most of the testing. And then, like, correctly, that I could observe at least. And then after, they're like, she is. So that, that I was surprised. But I, I'll be surprised if they don't think Finley's autistic. I think the most out of all the kids. <laughs> but he does have the pretend play skills, so. You stretch your arms? Whoa. You got things?
Jumping on the bed. Bella bumped his head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said. <gasps> More monkeys are jumping on the bed. Four little monkeys jumping on the bed. Fell off and bumped his Oh, her the doctor and the doctor said, Hello. My monkey is jumping on the bed. So, that's pretty much it for today. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't want to say that I'm sad. Because it's not sadness. It's just kind of like the realization that the world is made for neurotypical, able-bodied people and being neurodiverse is just going to make his life more difficult in terms of society. Uh, you know, and that, you know, that goes for a lot of things, not just autism, you know, but we'll deal with it you know <laughs> you know my brother my brother survived um and i think we're looking into probably speech therapy and occupational therapy for the younger kids at least and i think they they always recommend aba like i even the, I like his, his EI woman who, who works with him, but like, I, I don't want to do ABA therapy. I used to be in, uh, what's the word? It's an RBT, which is registered behavioral technician, registered behavior technician, um, for an ABA company. And I'm really kind of anti-ABA and a lot of those practices and I don't think any child should be going through therapy for 40 hours a week whether that's any type of therapy like I mean a baby like some babies like two-year-old kids or 18-month-old kids are getting prescribed like 40 hours a week of ABA which is insane like absolutely insane so I think we're gonna look into floor time I we did some kind of floor time stuff in ABA which is kind of like what the EI does where like someone just kind of like it's child-led learning I, I have to learn more of the whole philosophy of floor time but that's my understanding and more like how EI is where it's like incidental kind of learning like uh What's, what's the word? Um, like say, like, oh, there's a train and they like t -t train, like, like kind of using these natural opportunities for learning. Naturalistic learning. Yes, that's what I'm looking for. But I just don't know if that's something that's typically prescribed and something that insurance will cover because that is how America is. America stinks with that kind of stuff. And I have to look into speech and OT and how much that would cost and all that. And then also my husband and I, I think, are going to also get evaluations for uh, autism. Because uh, parents who, I mean, children who have children on the autism spectrum tend to have parents on the autism spectrum. And I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, I also had a sibling that's autistic that maybe I went undiagnosed for years. Uh, it's hard for girls to get diagnosed with autism uh, due to masking and stuff like that. So I honestly wouldn't be surprised. So if anyone's interested uh, or actually has gone through this themselves too, I would appreciate any advice on that. Um, yeah, so that's that, I guess. Uh, 
Finley and I are just going to, I got scared for a second because I just, I was worried that it was time to pick up my daughter, but I have another, oh no, I have two hours. Two hours, I just, I assume the appointment took way longer than it did. But, um, we're just gonna hang out and relax. We had an easy lunch today. Cause just a million things going on in my head and things I gotta do and, and all that. Um, so we'll probably get some cleaning done and let me know if there's any type of videos that you guys want me to do if anyone is watching because <laughs> uh, I'm pretty much an open book I'll kind of talk about anything and I do want to make more videos I probably will make a video on the girls and but I'll see you guys later. Bye.